Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to my 2013 Atlantic hurricane season tropical cyclone forecast. Today we'll be looking at several factors that will play into this hurricane season. Today is Monday, April 16th, 2013, and let's get started. Here's the 2013 naming list. Now, many of you might be familiar with these names if you've been tracking these hurricanes as long as I have. This is the same list that was used during the 2007 Atlantic hurricane season, with the exception of three names that were retired. So that would be Dean, Felix, and Thol. Now, here are the seasonal forecasts that have been released by the TSR, WSI, CSU. The TSR is forecasting 15 named storms, 8 hurricanes, and 3 major hurricanes. The Weather Service International is predicting 16 named storms, 9 hurricanes, and 5 major hurricanes. CSU, or Carlisle State University, is predicting 18 named storms, 9 hurricanes, and 4 major hurricanes. And obviously, so far, we have currently observed goose eggs. Here is the El Nino Southern Oscillation, or the ENSO. Now, many of you may have off questioned about what the ENSO is. Well, the ENSO is basically whether we're in El Nino or not. And here's the CFS Nino 1 plus 2 region out in the central Pacific. And you can tell the Nino 1 plus 2 anomalies have been plummeting and will likely continue to plummet, unlike the CFS is predicting. Obviously, you're not going to get such a sharp reversal of SST anomalies in this short of time. So odds are this will continue in a more gradual form and will eventually probably level out around the zero, negative 0 0.5 fr frame. Here is the ENSO CFS Nino 3.4 region, which is showing quite the opposite. It has shown a sharp increase in SST anomalies above the El Nino territory. However, the recent maps have actually been coming in, have been forecasting or not forecasting, have actually shown as leveling off and becoming less extreme but obviously it will not be as extreme as the CFS is forecasting is showing a complete reversal of SST anomalies and this seems totally unlikely to me. The Tropical Cyclone Heat Potential or TCHP now. The TCHP has often been, in my opinion, blown up proportion in importance. Now, don't get me wrong, it is pretty important to have an abundance of deep, warm, tropical water, but it isn't as important as some people make it out to be. You can have a fast-moving hurricane, for example, Hurricane Bertha in 2008, strengthen over an area of zero tropical cyclone heat, heat potential. What matters is the sea surface temperatures at that time, and Hurricane Bertha was able to take advantage of the sea surface temperatures and strengthen. But we'll get to sea surface temperatures later. For now, let's focus on tropical cyclone heat potential. Now, the TCHP in the Atlantic is about average, maybe a little below average. I wouldn't want to say below average because this is still pretty impressive for April 15th. But it isn't anything like we've seen in previous years where we've had an incredible amount of major hurricanes. For example, let's look at last year's where we had 2012. Now, 2012 ha also had a lot of TCHP. In fact, way more than normal. I think it was one of the most above average TCHP years we've seen at this point in time. And as you know, only two major hurricanes developed as a result of this. And they only one of them was in the Caribbean, and that was Hurricane Sandy. But anyways, this is the April 15, 2012. And like I just said, it is clearly above average. However, let's look at the 2011 Atlantic hurricane season, and you will see it was actually lower than it is now. And that was a hurricane season that still featured 19 named storms. So like I said, tropical cyclone heat potential is nowhere near as important as some people make it out to be. But, don't get me wrong, it is a very important factor to have. Hurricanes like Felix and Dean, who have gone into the Caribbean, have tremendously benefited from having deep, warm, plentiful amounts of TCHP in their past. And I hope, I honestly hope, we do not get something major this year. Anyways, here's the vertical instability, which is a deciding factor, or was a deciding factor in the last two hurricane seasons. As you remember, we didn't have a rel we had a relatively low amount of major hurricanes last year compared to the amount of hurricanes that we had. We had an insane amount of tropical storms. We had a rather impressive amount of hurricanes, but we did not have an impressive amount of major hurricanes. In fact, we only had two, Michael and Sandy. In any case, I believe that vertical instability would be a major deciding factor this hurricane season. 
As you can tell, vertical instability in the Gulf of Mexico has been relatively average, just maybe a slightly a bit below average at points. You can tell by these swings the amount of cold fronts that have come through this year. Here's the Caribbean, which has been running just about below average. Here is the subtropical Atlantic that's been running just about below average to maybe about average. And here's the vertical, tropical Atlantic vertical instability, which is also been relatively below average. Based on these factors, I believe that hurricanes will have a hard time, just like the last two years, of becoming truly powerful and be being able to reach their full potential as powerful hurricanes. Because of that, I believe that hurricanes will tend to be weaker this year, but there will tend to be more of them, and I'll explain why in a minute. Now, here are sea surface temperatures, or SSTs, and many people wonder about these, and I believe these are one of the most important factors in a hurricane season. SSTs determine whether or not a hurricane can, the amount of sea, the amount of, excuse me, the amount of warm waters that a hurricane could feed on. And more often than not, we have hur hurricane seasons with a lot of SST, a lot of abundance of SST, and hurricanes have been taking advantage of that. Now, one could argue with global warming and whatnot that this might be the cause, but this isn't a global warming discussion video. This is a tropical weather update. Anyways, as you can tell, the most, the majority, the main development region of the MVR is about average to above average. The majority of the Caribbean is about average to above average, and the majority of the Gulf of Mexico, with the exception of the northern Gulf Coast, has been relatively above average. Now, we see those cool pockets in the Gulf of Mexico. That's because of the brutal winter we've been seeing this winter, the winter that just won't stop with, na with storm after storm after storm affecting the Gulf Coast and the rest of the Atlantic. And as you can tell when I was I mentioned earlier that the Nino 3.4 areas were beginning to level off, you can see that in this recent update as cool water is beginning to develop off the coast of Southern America. And you can see this cool water pool extends all the way out to negative 160 degrees. Because of that, I believe that we will not see a full-on El Nino. We will see a more cool neutral or neutral conditions develop this year. That being said, things can change. It looked at this point last year that we would see an El Nino develop for the 2012 hurricane season, which wasn't the case because the Nino 1.2 regions, or excuse me, 1 plus 2 regions collapsed. And that caused us to see a relatively neutral year with 19 named storms. However, we did see some effects of El Nino, such as high trade winds in the Caribbean, so on and so forth, that caused most of the hurricanes to develop to be north of the MDR, to be out in the northern Atlantic and virtually no threat to land with the exception of a few hurricanes like Isaac and Sandy. So, in conclusion, an active hurricane season is very likely this year. I think we will be seeing 18 named storms, 9 hurricanes, and 2 major hurricanes. I believe that the ENSO will be near neutral during the peak of hurricane season. That will, in turn, cause more favorable conditions to develop across the Atlantic. Tropical cycle and heat potential will be about average to above average, like we've been seeing the last few hurricane seasons. Vertical instability will be average to below average, as I mentioned for the reasons before. And SSTs will continue to be above average across the tropical Atlantic. And finally, as an off-topic note, the Orbital Science Corporation, which is being paid by NASA to launch to the International Space Station, Antares, is having its first flight tomorrow. I would recommend watching NASA television for this. Launch window extends from 5 to 8 p.m. And launch windows extend all the way to the 21st.